All right, so it's just you out here on the open range playing your guitar. Don't have a band. Have a very bad looking cowboy hat. <laughs> Got a nice old Gibson. So you don't have to worry about group issues in Unit 14 whatsoever. It's just you and a cow and a horse and that's it. Nothing else. But for the rest of us that uh, have partners or work in this business and you actually have uh, somebody that you work with, could be the band. In the music business, it could be a bunch of partners that come together to do a uh, recording studio. It doesn't matter what it is that you have partners that you create. You know, there's going to be issues. Uh, kind of just like a relationship. Uh, yeah, I'm not Dr. Phil, and so I'm not going into it. But a lot of what Passman talks about are things that I see, and I got to tell you this, I see this almost once a term, at least once a term. Some nice young student comes in and said, I started my band with my boyfriend, and uh, we wrote a bunch of songs together, and now we're splitting up, and... Um, uh, what do I do? Who owns what? Uh, we call ourselves uh, Hummingbird Guitar, right? So <laughs> this is this is a tough thing that you have to deal with, and there's some very basic issues you, you you start to get a hold of. One is who owns the name. So there's been some interesting bands over the year, like Yo Flacco. It's a really good example. The first time I heard Yo Flacco was about eight or nine years ago. And they had a, a lot of, of a really, really cool Latin influence. And they were doing um, just really cool stuff that had a salsa and Latin influence in there. Uh, last time I heard them about a month ago, two months ago, I think, right before they moved to L.A., they, um, they were doing all kind of hip-hop vocals over uh, straight-ahead kind of hard rock stuff. So um, someone owned the name. Someone had the name. In my case, Chris Daniels and the Kings, duh, I own the name. But think of other bands, the Beatles. Who owns the name, the Beatles? Think of the, you know, whatever your project may be called. Who owns the name, the Flowbots? Who owns the name, the Fray? Is it Isaac? So that's one of the first issues you want to solve. Second one of the issues is that you're going to have to figure out what kind of governance you have. Who decides whether you um, bring in somebody or somebody leaves the band. Now, you might say, oh, man, we've been playing together since high school. Nothing's going to happen to us. Well, um, I can name the biggest bands in the world from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones to Dave Matthews. All of them have had personnel changes, whether it's due to death or it has to do with you know, changes in, we really need a different bass player. Um, uh, there's just any number of stories. And so you have to understand that a name is more than a name. It's actually a brand. Mm -hmm. No, not like a brand. I'm talking about branding. This is kind of a sort of a new area that everybody's now talking about and really Probably the guy who's the most famous for it is Gene Simmons from KISS, who was the first guy to come along and say, KISS is not a band, KISS is a brand. And if you think about it, new bands, Air Dubai, Bob Schism, any of the other great new bands that are out there, um, they're really coming up with something that is a brand. If you think of the DJs that are out there, that are traveling around the country that are you know, coming in, what, whoever they are, you know, there's a bunch of names and I could name them off, but it's not important. They really are creating a brand out of their name and what's going on. You know, DJ, Master, Funk, Flash, Flush, whoever it happens to be. I'm making fun, but I, I, I mean, right now, electronic and DJ stuff is paying some of the best in the world. Um, and it's, it's pretty exciting with what's going on with that. Um, but who owns that? You know, is it a corporate name? Is it the DJ's name? So you got to deal with the name. You got to deal with who, how you're going to hire people and fire people, and then who owns the songs, copyrights, and all of that stuff. 
And then you have to deal with the really interesting question. If somebody leaves, you know, and let's say you were starting out van and you all pitched in to, cre you know, get the van and get the van and some equipment and all that stuff and all the gig money went into doing that and somebody leaves, you've got to come up with a method for helping them feel comfortable leaving because remember we talked about this in copyrights, everybody owns that song. So you might want to have a, this kind of prearranged. It's been sometimes called a prenuptial uh, or a prebanjual, uh, but the idea is really straight ahead. And that is that you can come up with some fairly simple agreements that everybody can sign. You don't even need a lawyer for this. In fact, I give you a template at the very end of this unit to start thinking about this. And when we get into artist management, we'll go very deep into it. But I want to introduce you to it now because it's really, really important is to understand that when you're working with people, people don't always do things the way you think they should. People get married. They get tired of being on the road. They, they, you know, changes come up. You want a different drummer. Your drummer falls asleep and does too many whatever kind of chemicals. You know, all of these things are issues you're going to have to deal with if you're in any kind of a group. This has to do also with if you're putting together a studio. You know, one person's really good at this, one person's really good at that, and then you decide to go your separate ways, but you've put a lot of money into the studio together. How do you buy someone out from their parts of it? So this is really an important part of this, and, and we're going to spend a little time with it now, getting you introduced to it. When we get to artist management, we're going to talk about it a lot. Group issues are really an essential part of things. So that's it, partners. Unless you're living out on a range with you, a cow, and a chihuahua. Got a chihuahua around here? I might have a chihuahua. That's about it. You're going to have to deal with some of these group issues. All right. Kate, you're in the campfire. Who thinks? Who thinks?